Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering uh, the first section of Chapter 7, Electrodynamics, and Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. So, hooray! We're finally here. We get to talk about what we've always wanted to talk about since the beginning of the book. Um, so, this first section covers Ohm's Law. And, uh, first of all, don't despair. Everything that you learned uh, from Chapter 2 to Chapter 6 about magnetism and electrostatics, magnetostatics and electrostatics, absolutely applies. There is uh, one tiny edge case that we have to handle to get to Maxwell's laws. It's a fairly trivial thing, and you'll find that it's, uh, it's quite refreshing to see how close we are to the, to the final product. Um, basically, for electrostatics and magnetostatics, so for statics, the, the rule is that um, the change and the charge over time and the change and the current density over time is equal to zero. That's the, that's the bottom line that applies to electrostatics and magnetostatics. Um, there's one exception to what you learned in chapter two and it has to do with conductors. So we told you, or I told you, that inside of a conductor the electric field is zero. And when you start having a steady current in a conductor um, no longer is that true. So inside a conductor, is not necessarily zero. So it may not be zero. So that's probably not the right symbol for that, that statement. But it's not necessarily zero. Um, the curious thing is that it doesn't behave like you would ex The charges within a conductor don't behave like you would expect uh, according to Newton's mechanics. We don't have charges just increasing, increasing in speed. Instead, it kind of like in a pachinko game, those balls fall at a constant rate. So we have um, this first equation of chapter seven. The current, densit uh, the current density is equal to some constant called the conductivity, sigma, times a force per unit charge. Okay, so that's your electric field or magnetic field or whatever it is, okay? And so this sigma is the conductivity. Let me put a box around this equation. This is kind of the core equation here. So this is called the conductivity. It tells you how fast those balls are gonna fall in the pachinko game. Uh, the opposite, the inverse of the conductivity, one over sigma is rho, not to be confused with the charge density. This is the um, resistivity and it's a it's a characteristic of matter so it doesn't depend on the geometry or anything like that it's just if you have um, something it has a conductivity or resistivity um, what's interesting is that insulators even our insulators have a conductivity so they do conduct not very well um, the, the book mentions it's off by a factor of 10 to the 22 compared to a real conductor um, but for, for real conductors, for metals, the, the conductivity is so high that you can assume it's practically infinity. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, the implications of that in a minute. Okay, so um, this force that drives this, uh, the current through the, con the conductor could be any kind of force. It could be gravity. It could be, um, you know, some other kind of force, uh, some mysterious force that you can invent. It could even be trained ants with <laughs> tiny harnesses, as he says in the book. So, um, but in, in our case, we're only interested in the force due to um, the things that we learned about. So that's the electric field and the magnetic field. Okay. And in problems we're going to start, the problems we're going to solve, we're going to ignore the magnetic field. It doesn't really contribute much. Um, if you're going to do plasma research, you can't ignore the, the, uh, the magnetic field. So for us, only the electric field is important. And this is the source of the discussion in this chapter. This is, we're going to call this Ohm's Law. It's one of the fundamental laws. It's not even really a law, but um, it's more of a rule of thumb. But anyway. So uh, next examples are going to cover some, some demonstrations of using this equation to find how um, different kinds of matter behave in different geometric organizations. And then we're going to wrap up the chapter with uh, one more example and then move on to the next section. Thank you for your time.